welcome to NPTEL. Myself, Dr. Joyanto Dash from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. Today, we will start a new topic on nanomaterials. So, let us say here the name itself suggests that the nano itself is somehow linked with the length scale means nanometer which is let us say one billionth of, of smaller than a meter. So, the, the first why we need this material means what is in that length scale of nanometer. If you look at the length scale of different substances, then you will see that for an atom the size is less than a nanometer means in the scale of finger angstrom means the distance between two atom is let us say 3 to 4 angstrom means 0 0.3 nanometer. Now, if you look at a DNA that is a scale of 2 to 3 nanometer size. However, in most of the biological let us say uh, cells here it is somewhat around 1000 nanometer. A 1000 nanometer means that 1 micrometer or let us say 10 to the power minus 6 level a micron means basically. Now, in case of a large scale pin head that are visible in your eye is also quite a large and it is almost 10 to the power 6 nanometer means basically like a like a few uh, few of these uh, millimeter scale whereas the human is very very large so the over such a large increase in the size from a atom to a large human body so the nano the scale is somewhat very close to this structure. Now, uh, we are now talking about basically different biological substances whereas, for materials we like to tune the properties by modifying some structure in material in the level of a nanometer. Okay. So, in that scale if you look at some of these such a representative microstructure where we have some grain of zirconia. So, here this is a nano zirconium dioxide with a grain size in the scale of 5 to 7 nanometer. Okay. Now, here this is a scale bar of 10 nanometer and you can easily understand the length scale of that particular phase. Here the properties depends on the length scale or the size or let us say in a more metallurgical sense sometimes we call it as a grain size or in a more general sense we call it as a particle size in such a way. So, this nano material itself is a very very wide and vast field and it is under development of of several class of material not only taking the input of the materials engineering or material scientist field, but also it is of interest of physicist from chemistry and definitely for biology. So, any medicine drug delivery in all these aspect the nano material is covering such a large area that other material cannot compete with it. So, in this particular discussion topic we will try to cover up the benefit the fundamentals of all these uh, nano material and their structure. Now, uh, let us uh, try to think how to produce these nano material which are very close to the length scale of, of few atoms. There are basically two 
broad categories of processing of these nano materials. The first approach we call it as a bottom up approach. In this case, we basically start with some atoms, let us say these atoms could be different elements. Okay. So, let us assume that these blue colors are a copper and let us say the, the, the blue uh, the red colors are let us say the, the gold and so on. And then by some chemical or physical process or let us say something like vapor deposition means we start with an atom and then it deposit on a, on a substrate. So, the atoms are in a vapor state. So, by that kind of chemical or physical process we build up some of these atomic clusters or let us say particles with let us say uh, these are often called as a zero dimension particles. On the other hand the we can also uh, make those kind of atomic clusters into a tube or rod shape like carbon nanotube. Okay. So, this is also a one dimensional object or maybe we can try to make some layered structure out of those by deposition technique, layer after layer deposition of different types of atoms or different types of, of substances. So, these are called as layered structure or let us say two dimensional like we have a uh, we have a x and y direction and in the z it is it is uh, considered to be like a 0. However, besides atom we can also start with molecules actually. Okay. So, some of these molecule we can deposit and, and to make such kind of uh, carbon nanotube and so on. So, this is one of this type where we start with atoms or molecule in order to produce this nano structure. Okay. And you can easily uh, realize that since nanometer length scale is very close to the atomic scale actually. So, it must be must be uh, very easy to obtain. Yes, in some sense yes. Now, on the other hand we have another technique that is called top down. Top down means we start with very bulk solid okay, or bulk structure. This is let us say a some uh, more than uh, 2 or 3 millimeter in any of this scale and then by some mechanical or chemical forming operation we keep on reducing its grain size and this grain size which let us say initially was some micrometer it reduces down let us say to few nanometer. So, we can achieve such a very very small teeny grain size by some mechanical or uh, chemical forming operation in order to produce some bulk nanostructure. So, these are two major technique that are very much evolved and adopted by the scientists or researchers these days. Now, let us have a look at in the left hand side the lateral size. Okay. So, in that case you will see that uh, here we have 1 nanometer and 10 to the power minus 7 meter where we have something in the scale of some 100 or, or multiple of that nanometer. So, we are talking about basically within these scales and the bottom up approach means we start with uh, uh, let us say uh, such a scale and then we uh, simply uh, keep on growing it so that we can reach up to here. So, this is uh, within that length scale we can achieve. On the other hand let us say the conventional top up or some advanced top up uh, processes we can also achieve from a, a relative amount of 0 okay, to go up to up to this scale. Hmm. So, the relative amount basically increases and when we reach up to let us say 100 of such nanometer. So, both of these technique are, are quite readily available and we can adopt however, there are all time scientists have to take precaution on several aspect in order to restrict the growth of those particles. So, mostly in that particular field you will uh, you will hear about these two terminologies one is called as nanomaterial 
and another one is called as nano composites. However, there are some similarities and dissimilarities. So, let us first start with the nano material, what do we mean by? It is basically a class of material where the structural component at the nano scale and they exhibit one of the dimension in the nano scale. And the prefix here the nano it basically means that it is basically billionth of a unit. So, that the nano scale is normally considered as a 1 to 100 nanometer. So, this is by definition. Okay. Uh, I mean one can always think about 200 nanometer of a grain size in a, in, a, in a metal and we can still think about yes it is still in the nano scale because something beyond that 100 nanometer to 1 micrometer we call them as a ultra fine. This is in a general conventional sense actually. However, when we talk about such a length scale when the nano represent that any one of the dimension at a nano scale. So, in terms of dimension we can classify also these uh, nano material like it could be some particle shape means, means like such a shape. So, these are often called as a 0 dimension. Now, we take a particle or maybe we can think about such a rod shape or weird shape or let us say tube shape okay. and this is since in one dimension it is much larger than a nanometer uh, this could go up to any even for meter, but at least in one of this dimension yes and the, so these are often called as basically 1 d. The reason here 1 d means basically in one dimension it is longer where in case of particle it is along all the directions they are in the nano scale. Now, we can also think about some films which is in the 2D okay, or maybe in a 3D we can also produce some bulk nano material. So, here this is a class of nano material, but when we consider as a composite then at least one of the phase in a composite, composite mean basically means two phase or more than two phases aggregate. So, here at least one of the phase is in the nano scale. And the special properties of nano material is in it. So, that we can uh, particularly enhance the properties of that composite. So, this is one of the uh, big challenging areas for developing newer materials. Now, I show you one of the 0 d um, composite here you see this is a phase which is in the nano scale and these are 0 d particles incorporated in a matrix which is here like a uh, like a, a greener color. Now, it could be also a nano scale uh, thin rod and quite a long rod they are dispersed in a in a matrix. So, this is also called as a 1 d nano composite. So, you see the name basically came from the dimensionality of the second phase nano material that is incorporated in the matrix. Now, we can also produce some composite which is called as a 2 d composite like phase 1 and phase 2. So, here these are the layered by structures and we basically uh, get a, a composite out of this phase 1 and phase 2 where one of the phase is in the nano scale. So, this is all about basically nano composite, but we will discuss this nano composite a little bit in detail. So, that we can see specifically how are those areas. So, first let us start with the nano material and its classification that what these materials are made of. As I said that depending on the dimension of the, uh, of the nano material we classify these, uh, uh, these material. So, the 0 dimension are mostly the particles. Here you see here 
So, these are the nanoparticle and I show you here some microstructure of such 0 dimension particle. Here all the dimensions means x, y and z they all are in the nano scale. So, here this is a, a, a particle you see this is the scale bar uh, which is 10 nanometer. So, in any direction in x, y and z they all are in the nano scale. Now, let us come to the 1 d in case of 1 d x and y dimension is in the nano scale means I have such kind of rod or tube where let us say if this is the x direction and this is the y direction x and y they are in the nano scale, but not in the z direction. So, here the d is less than 100 uh, nanometer. So, we can easily assume that this nano wire or nano rod or nano tube they are in the 1 d nano composite. In case of a 2 d nano composite we can simply think about that here the x and y direction they are much larger than 100 nanometer. However, one dimension one direction okay, like in z direction the thickness of this um, layer is less than 100 nanometer. Now, there are also again two options this is something interesting means when we deposit something it may have some grain and this grain have some finite length scale right. So, let us say this is the grain and in one direction it is 100 nanometer no doubt about it, but this grain size may be in the nanometer or in the micrometer. So, when it is in the scale of some nano structure then we call it as nano crystalline multi layer. Okay. So, here thickness is less than 100 nanometer whereas, in other case let us say when micro crystalline phases are there then we call it as a micro crystalline uh, multi layers. Now, this is the fourth category is the 3 D in 3 D here no bulk dimension is available in the in the nano scale. So, this could be a meter, uh, but inside that material we have very fine grains and this grain has a finite diameter hmm, that is d and this d is basically is in the nano scale let us say 1 to uh, 100 nanometer. So, I show you here one microstructure of such bulk 3 D nano material where the grains are present and these grains has a size scale of in the scale of 50 nanometer okay. and this is also possible. So, all these four different class of nano material that uh, I have shown you. Now, let us move on that what is the chemistry of this nano material or what are the different classification in terms of their structure. Okay. So, the in terms of structure uh, as you know that it could be crystalline, it could be amorphous or it could be quasi crystalline. On the other hand it could be also single crystalline or polycrystalline what does it mean? It means I may have produced a 0 d uh, nano material and it may contain three different grains. Okay. So, grain 1, 2 and 3 however, the size is let us say 50 nanometer a particle having 50 nanometer size with inside 3 grains that is also possible. So, this case we call it as a polycrystalline because there are multiple crystalline inside or it could be simply single crystal. Huh? Now, here we can think about that it is only containing gold particle uh, or it could be a alloy of gold and copper that is also possible. So, it could composed of a single or multi chemical elements or uh, it could have polycrystalline or crystalline structure. Now, it could be in different shapes means it may have 
some sort of cuboidal shape or it may have some spherical shape, it may have some uh, uh, long rod type of shape in various shapes. So, that is why this structure came, it is not only the crystal structure, but also in terms of shape actually. Now, these nano material could exist individually means I produce all these nano materials and, and they are, are let us say isolated particles or it could also be incorporated in a matrix. So, please remember when we incorporate in a matrix we call them as a composite. Now, uh, from the very basic fundamental it could have metallic bonding or it could be ceramic let us say oxide nitride or that kind of bonding or it could be also polymer material let us say hydrocarbon. Huh? So, this is all the possibilities in case of the structure of the nano materials and we can classify them further. So, I show you some of the example of such here these are some platinum nano particle that is inside a amorphous matrix. Yes, we can call it as a composite there is no doubt, but I want to show you specifically this platinum particle and you see this is a single crystal I mean it, it is a single crystalline phase. Now, it could be also a, a carbon nano rod that is quite uh, long and let us say 50 nanometer and, and that kind of size scale. Now, uh, for uh, several uh, uh, TEOS uh, we sometimes coat it with platinum. So, here this is a platinum that has been coated uh, of a of that coating thickness is something like 100 nanometer. Hmm. So, uh, on a on a silicon nitride and let us say on, on, on a copper or it could be let us say a bulk copper nano crystalline copper where you can see both the twins and the grains that has some length scale of, of something like 100 nanometer. So, basically we start with some 0 d, 1 d and let us say a 2 d and, 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 and 3 d type of nano material I once again I show you in terms of their structures. Now, um, in case of nano composite there are some more interesting things we must discuss as I said that for a 0 d composite. So, these are like spherical particles incorporated in a matrix. However, their distribution may be very homogeneous, very well organized or may be a let us say some sort of random distribution with different size of those spherical particles or 0 d particles. In that case to produce such a ordered 0 d nano composite there are many challenges because they always like to coagulate. On the other hand, it could be produced only by some sort of self organization. Now, um, I show you one of such a 0 d nano composite, however, it is uh, not by produced by self organization, but you see here this is a alumina matrix A L 2 O 3, where we have some zirconia particles inside it okay. and they have some different sizes. Okay. Now, um, what is the use of it you can always think about. Uh, the major challenge here the first challenge that they always like to dissolve in the matrix if they have good solubility hmm. and for a very very long time from the very ancient time let us say something like 4th or, or 7th century BC people have produced these kind of red color ruby glass means a glass is usually silicon dioxide and they have a transparent in color, but how they have produced such kind of beautiful color and they exist for thousands of thousands of years as stable material without changing its properties means I am talking about the optical properties. So, microstructure in these glass must have been designed in such a way that even though we even called as a glass as a metastable material, but they are stable. So, here the microstructure design is very much important and fortunately this ruby glass is also a nano composite and this is very interesting. What is the microstructure? The microstructure contain a matrix which is a glass that is silicon dioxide and there are some nano particle in it yes and since the nano particles such a very tiny size 
are always tend to be a metastable. So, they need a diffusion barrier around the particle which stabilizes the particle in the matrix. So, that they never dissolve in it. So, the matrix and the particle when they exhibit a mutual solubility the diffusion barrier is basically required in order to stabilize. In case of ruby glass we have some gold particle or gold nanoparticle that is present in a silicon dioxide glassy matrix which is known as a Roman glass and how they have achieved it? They achieved it by a diffusion barrier around the gold particle and this is a gold and here this is basically a tin oxide. And that tin oxide actually stabilizes the gold particle and gives as a such a ruby like color. So, this stabilization phenomena is well known in the field of colloidal chemistry and we, they call it as a colloid stabilizer. Okay. So, this is another important aspect of producing newer material uh, uh, as a nano composite and uh, changing uh, their properties. Now, uh, on the other hand, if we look at let us say a, a 1D com nano composite, the 1D nano composite we produce by let us say a polymer and uh, a carbon nanotube that is reinforced in a polymer. So, polymer is bound that carbon nanotube in order to enhance the electrical conductivity to the polymer. So, you now try to I mean you now realize that the properties of a material if it need to be enhanced then we can incorporate those nanoparticle to simply change its properties. Now, very similar like a 0 d nano composite in biology or medicine the ceramic core that could be let us say um, in case of medicine we can use such a ceramic core that has some special properties and that may need to reach up to a let us say some tumor specific uh, cell and, and need to be attached and they do not may not have very good property to attach with the human body. And therefore, this is a kernel and then surrounding we make a coupling layer and what we do? After this coupling layer, this cell or tumor specific protein is attached with that so that we can solve the purpose. So, here this is has a ceramic core that may be magnetic in nature or let us say luminescence in nature with some specific properties. So, the cell or tumor specific protein that we attach with the surface which require as a coupling layer between the ceramic core and the body, body cells. So, you see that how this uh, nano uh, material or composite is so much important because we, the, here the material is only this one right. So, this is the material that we need and now we are trying to make some composite so that we can solve our purpose. Very similar in case of materials field like a 0 d nano composite here this is a particle that is consist of a iron oxide. So, this is a gamma iron oxide. And here uh, we basically um, a coated with a PMMA coating. So, this is a PMMA coating which is uh, encapsulating this uh, uh, iron oxide particle and to solve the purpose. So, this is also a great example of such nano composite. So, uh, now, we must uh, think about what are the challenges of this making this composite. The first challenge is to make a perfect distribution of these two phases. Uh, we can always think about some sort of mechanical blending, but when we mechanically blend since the surface area of this particle is very high they always try to coagulate and make a cluster of those particle. So, homogeneous distribution is always next to impossible. We can have two alternative one is the mechanical blending and the second one is synthesizing two phase separately and blend them uh, uh, when they are during processing condition. So, it still cannot solve the problem because the probability of two or more particle to be in contact with each and other is very very high and therefore, we should have a aim to make some active particles 
that is our aim that each and every particle should act separately not by joining together that is not our intention like I uh, show you a example of let us say uh, the for medicine purpose how we use zero decomposite right. We attach some protein uh, on the surface of those composite because we want each an individual particle to be active. So, the solution uh, for such, uh, um, such problem that to make a good distribution of two phases is the coating that I just said few minutes ago on the particles in order to make them some active phase and to make a distance to the holder phase either by these following approaches. There are two approach what we can do. First thing is that synthesize a metastable solution and go for some sort of precipitation which I show you as a alumina and zirconia. So, here zirconia at higher temperature is soluble in alumina and then reduce the temperature and zirconia means zirconium dioxide will be precipitated in a alumina matrix. So, that is one of the very uh, nice example. On the other hand, we can simply go for coating the particles so that we can keep them isolating. Here I have a core or kernel and the coating material are distributed very homogeneously on the nanometer scale. And then the particle basically produced by first the reaction step and the coated with a distance holder phase in the second reaction stage. So, this is all about how we produce nano composite and how we keep isolation of individual particle to get the best benefit of this nano material. Now, uh, here I show you in terms of the dimensionality and the scale up means different classes. Here you will see a discrete object of nano, here this is a object of uh, nano featured surface and this is let us say the bulk means from a discrete nano object how we scale up up to go up to this condition. We can definitely think about let us say carbon in a smoke that is a typical uh, nano particle uh, in a smoke or diesel fumes. Whereas, let us say uh, for a layer we can produce some carbon nanocrystalline films or maybe some uh, gold or let us say some other uh, diamond nanocrystalline films or also we can uh, produce some bulk nanostructure uh, by nanoparticle composite or let us say nanocrystalline material. Okay. On the other hand if we think about a two dimension uh, nanostructure then we always think about a nanofilm like a, um, a gilding foil and so on. Whereas, if we scale it up we can produce some nano scale surface layer or maybe we can go for some multi layers layer by layer deposition or processing so that we can reach up to a bulk nano structure. So, this is the overall uh, very initial discussion today we have done on nano materials and nano composites. Thank you very much.